What's up guys, it's Brad from Light Architect. In this video, I'm going to share with you a simple quick tip on how you can create a poor man's water simulation inside of Blender in order to create simple water droplets or stream effects without using heavy fluid simulations. This process is fairly simple. Essentially, we're going to be using a particle system, instancing some metaballs, which if you know anything about, visually sort of glue together based on the proximity they are to each other. Anyways guys, let's get started. Here we are inside of Blender. This is going to be the final result in our scene. I've just done a fairly simple scene set up here for the sake of this tutorial. I have some 3D scans of some rocks here. I have some vines that I've drawn into our scene with our GeoFX add-on for Blender. And then finally, of course, our spigot here with the fluid simulation coming out of it. So as you can see here, if I play through our scene, we're getting kind of this splattering water droplet effect. And this is all done without standard fluid simulation. So it's much faster to simulate inside of Blender. And what we're doing here to create this kind of poor man's process fluid simulation is we're just creating a basic Newtonian particle system. But rather than instancing a standard sphere or, you know, other 3D model on our particle system, we're actually instancing a meta ball. A meta ball, if you guys aren't familiar with it, is kind of just a point in 3D space. And when they're next to each other, depending on their proximity, they'll actually stick together. So as you can see here, this is a meta ball that I've just added into our scene with shift A and meta ball. And as you can see here, if I press shift D and duplicate this, it's actually, you know, kind of organically connected to the other meta ball in the scene. So this is a really interesting way you can create organic shapes in Blender and also create a poor man's fluid simulation. Because when you instance these all really close to each other on a particle system, they still react in this way and create that kind of fluidic motion. So if that's what we're doing rather than just instancing, say, for example, a basic sphere on this system. So for example, if I add a sphere, go over here, scale it to the same size as the meta ball. And then rather than instance the meta ball on this particle system, I go to our particle system and under our render settings, I switch this to sphere. Now you can see what this looks like with a similarly sized sphere. It's not looking nearly as much like water. That's really the trick here, guys. Of course, if you know how to do this, you can probably stop the tutorial there and get started and just instance your meta balls on your particle system. But I'm going to show you guys the whole process on how I set this up in the video. And just for the sake of this tutorial, I'll show you guys the rendered view View. looks pretty cool here as you can see our water is splashing into the 3d scan of our stream here and of course we have our nice vines here with our GeoFX add-on where you can draw them into your scene of course selling these add-ons is part of why we can make these videos for you guys but uh, we'll go ahead and get rid of those for the sake of this tutorial so we can go a little bit faster here and let's get started from scratch so we'll go ahead and delete our particle system that's on our spigot and we'll start from scratch here and i'll also just delete our meta ball as well as our sphere over here and now we'll just start off from here the first thing i'm going to do is create that particle system so i'll go to our particle system tab with our spigot selected and i'll click on add and now as you can see here we have some particles being emitted from our water spigot however we just want them to come out of the spigot here so we're going to tell blender to only emit particles from the inside of the spigot here with a vertex group. So I'll select our spigot here, go to the data tab and add a new vertex group. And we'll call this vertex group water. Click on OK. And now while our spigot is selected, we'll go to the white paint mode here. And now we just want to draw where we want those particles to come out of. So in this case, the interior of the spigot. So I'll just kind of zoom in here and draw a point where I want those particles to emit from. And you can go a little bit more crazy with this, but I think this should be pretty good. You might have to adjust it to dial in your results a bit more, but this should be fine. Go back into object mode. And now I'll go back to our particle system settings, scroll down here to vertex groups. And for density, we're going to select that water vertex group that we have just created. And now as you can see here, if I play through my scene, the particles are just going to emit from that weight painted data. Now right now our particles aren't looking like we want. So the key for this first part is to get the particles to move through your scene as if they were simulating water. So one thing I want to do is just scroll over here to our velocity tab in the particle settings. And I just want to bring down the normal to zero. And now if we play through our scene, it should just go straight down like so as if water is coming out of a spigot. Already this is looking much better. One more thing we can do is uh, maybe adjust the object aligned settings here. And by doing this, 
on the y-axis, we can actually give them a velocity based on the y-axis in the 3D world here. So as you can see here, if I bring this back, I just want them to come straight out of the spigot. This should be pretty good. And I know we have some particles kind of coming out of the side here as well, but I think we should be able to tweak this and make it look right. If you're still having issues with some intersecting particles on your geometry here, you can do something like uh, maybe create a cylinder, for example, and then put this where the water spigot would be, you know, at the exit portion of the water spigot here. And you can just add your particle system to that. But I think this is gonna work just fine once we tweak some of our settings, maybe repaint those values. But uh, yeah, we're gonna go with this. And now it's time to instance our metaball on this particle system rather than having it show up like a halo here. So I'll go ahead and press Shift A. We will add a metaball to our scene, we'll scale it down a bit. And then now I will select our particle system, scroll down here to render, and we will render this as an object and then select the instance object as our metaball here. Now, as you can see here, if we play through our scene, well, right now, it looks like just very uh, simple dripping water because we actually need to increase the scale of our particles here. So maybe just make this 0.1 and already we're getting something that looks kind of like a dripping faucet, for example, but uh, we do want to increase the number of these particles and the size of these particles as well. So I'll try something like 0.2 for the scale. Okay, 0.2 might be a little much. I'll still keep it at 0.1 and then we'll just increase the number of particles in our particle system. So I'll scroll up here, go to number, maybe make this 5,000. Okay, so we're getting a little bit more like a stream of water here. I'm gonna increase this to 7,000 and we're not getting the best stream here so far, but we're just gonna keep adjusting it till we get something that we'd like. You know, you can also play around with our particle emission settings here. So I'll make the start and end frame of our water spigot turning on maybe one to 100, which is the length of our timeline in this example. And then also the lifetime, probably 50 should be just fine. And uh, yeah, this should be pretty good. Now just increase the number of particles maybe to 10,000. We're just trying to fill in those gaps so that all the metaballs can connect. This is looking a lot better. We're still getting a little bit of missing, uh, our stream is missing that flow right here in the center. However, this could actually look pretty good as long as you're not up close, but this effect is really for kind of medium to distant visual effects elements anyway. This is not something you're gonna to wanna to use right up close next to the camera, but it's just something that's very fast and simple to simulate compared to an actual fluid simulation. So this is looking pretty good. I might just increase the size to 0.12, and there we go. Now we have a more fluid stream right off the bat, and already this is looking like a nice bit of flowing water. Now there are two more things we want to do for this tutorial. First, I want to create a material for our metal ball that looks a little bit more like water because as you can see here if we go into rendered view right now our stream is being rendered just as our white diffuse material so we're going to do that and we also want our particle system to splatter by making our ground scan here a collision object so first I'll make our ground splatter to make our ground interact with our poor man's water simulation system here all we have to do is select our ground plane that our particle system interacts with and then we can just go to the physics tab and click on add collision and I've already actually set up the proper settings for the sake of this tutorial, but you can just copy these as is, or you can just play around with the different settings in order to get something that you like. But as you can see here, if you just copy these general values, so damping at 0.434, randomize at one, friction at 0.066, and randomize friction at 0.24, you should get a result very similar to mine. And as you can see here, our water is splattering and we're having some nice droplets here. You can even see that we're getting some buildup of water actually kind of congregating on our ground here, which is quite nice. And you can see if we go into render view, the droplets are looking really nice for something so simple. One thing I do want to adjust before we get into our materials is the size of our water droplets. They're a little bit too big, so I might just decrease the size of our meta ball here to make them a bit smaller. And then I'll also select our particle system and then maybe we'll increase this to 11,000 to fill in those gaps a bit. And already this is looking pretty nice here, guys. Now for the last step in this tutorial, I wanna just set up our material for the water. So I'll just select our meta ball here. We'll go into the shading tab. And right now we're rendering in the cycles rendering engine. However, you can also render this out in Eevee, but I'll just select our meta ball here. I'll click on new material. And then I'll just use our basic principled BSDF shader, but then I will increase our transmission weight to one. Now, as you can see here, it's looking a little bit more like water. You can bring down the roughness if you like, maybe 0.18 looks pretty good, looks pretty much like a water droplet 
And now as you can see here, if we go back into layout mode and rendered view, we have a fairly nice looking water simulation here. Now, I still not super happy with the size of our droplets here. So I'm going to adjust this further. I might just bring down the size of our icosphere a bit more. So we're getting some smaller droplets mixed in with some of the bigger pieces. And I'll just increase the number of our particles even more. Or we could even add children particles if we want to save even more memory. But I think maybe we just increase this to maybe 15,000 particles. Now we're getting something with a nice flow, but also some smaller droplets as well. We can also, of course, increase the lifetime of these particles if you want them to last longer in your scene. But this is the general idea, guys. That is how you can create kind of a poor man's water simulation very quickly inside a blender using particle systems and metaballs. This could be great for adding water coming out of gutters for rain sequences, or even adapted to simulate blood splatters or other effects where you need something that looks like liquid, but you don't want to bake all of that heavy data into your scene. Anyways, guys, that is it for this video. I hope it was helpful. As always, feel free to leave a comment if you have any questions or suggestions in the comment section below. Let us know what you'd like to learn next on the channel. Subscribe if you're interested in more visual effects and filmmaking content, and I'll see you next time.